Hey boys and girls, hope everybody's doing well. Okay, so these next couple of days, we're gonna finish up with what we were talking about, about the atmosphere. Now, let's go over the first few layers, okay? We live in this layer, okay? And that is the troposphere. Troposphere <clears throat> is where most of the atmosphere is contained. The reason we say most of the atmosphere is contained here is because most of the oxygen is here in this layer and most of the water vapor which makes up a lot of the atmosphere um this is where all the weather's found this is where all the action takes place is the is the is the is the sphere we're located in all our act all the action pretty much in the atmosphere takes place in our layer uh, which is the troposphere now the next one we go from a really really soupy full of water vapor and oxygen to somewhere this the exact opposite and that's the stratosphere and they are basically they are touching one another and this is a very different place this is a place where there is very little air and there's very little water vapor there's no weather there's no clouds it's a very stable place where in the troposphere we live in a very chaotic place somewhere that's kind of crazy there's hurricanes happening and tornadoes happening and and all these horrible thunderstorms and and these tide changes and all these crazy things are happening in our sphere but in the stratosphere the one that's touching us it's relatively very little going on it's a very peaceful peaceful place and that's because there is no air and water vapor and hot and cold mixing so it's going to be a really really chill place so those are the first two layers now the next layer up is going to be something called the mesosphere okay now the mesosphere is a little bit different than the other two as well and we're going to talk about this one right here it is directly above the stratosphere so we're talking about the third layer here this is the third layer and the third layer is a very poorly understood part of the atmosphere. It's a long way up in the sky. So you're talking about like 35 miles up. Um, this is where all the space junk kind of disintegrates. And like you go outside and you say, oh man, I just saw a shooting star. Um, it really wasn't a shooting star. Um, it was a piece of space junk or a small piece of space rock coming through the atmosphere and burning up because it's meeting air for the first time. And they burn up in the mesosphere. So when you're seeing something get burned up and you're seeing this streak go across the sky, you're looking at about 35 to 40 miles up in the atmosphere in this place called the mesosphere. Now the mesosphere, there is one thing that we can talk about. The mesosphere is very poorly um, understood because it is extremely, extremely, extremely cold in the mesosphere. And every time scientists try to go and put an instrument in the mesosphere to see what's going on there, you know, measure the oxygen and the water vapor and all these things, everything they send up freezes and they can't get good data back so that'll tell you a little bit about the mesosphere super duper cold okay which being the third layer is kind of weird because you know i always told you the cold air dunked down well this layer even though it's, it's in that protective little um that little protective uh bubble of that sphere it's super duper cold okay which is going to take us to the next to the last one of the atmosphere and that is going to be the thermosphere okay now this is the shell of our atmosphere okay um this is where the aurora borealis occurs and i'm going to show you some pictures of the aurora borealis we don't generally get the aurora down here it only generally happens in the north pole and the south pole generally there are instances where they happen in alaska and in Canada, and I've heard them happening in upper state New York, places like that, but that's a rare, rare thing. The Aurora Borealis is basically the sun um, having a reaction with our atmosphere, and it causes these really beautiful lights um, up there. Now, the really weird thing about the thermosphere is this, the mesosphere, which I just told you was super duper cold, 
and we can't understand it because everything freezes when you get to that layer. Well, on top of that, the thermosphere is thousands of degrees high, which is really, really odd because you just leave this really cold spot and then the next layer up, it's super duper hot, thousands of degrees. Um, that's basically where space shuttle basically orbits around the earth. This is where space begins. You can start getting, so if we went up there, we would start floating in our seats or floating in the vehicle we were in because this is kind of where space is starting. Um, this is not a misunderstood part of the atmosphere. This is a very well understood part of the atmosphere because we're in it a lot when we take the space shuttle up and we go into orbit around the earth to study the earth. Um, now this is a picture of the Aurora Borealis and you can see it's these clouds and they send off these really beautiful lights. They're pink and green and just these awesome, really cool colors, but they look like regular clouds, but they're just really, really high up in the atmosphere miles and miles right on the tip of space is where they lay so we don't really see them much i wish we did it'd be really cool now this right here is a picture of the atmosphere and this is taken by nasa so if you look at this picture i'm going to try to kind of explain it to you it's going to be a little bit tough because i know you probably can't see it as well as i can well you see this layer right here this orange layer that is the layer we live in and the reason it's orange is because it's full of water vapor and the sun is ricocheting off this water vapor and making this really beautiful orange red scene now if you look at this really lightly colored blue line right there that is the stratosphere okay still a little bit of water vapor not really that much very little oxygen but blue sky now if you look at this white part right there that is going to be the mesosphere okay that's the cold part where we really can't study that well and then this one right here that's kind of like going right through the moon that's going to be the thermosphere and then out here the blackness is going to be the exosphere which we haven't talked about yet the exosphere is the last layer that is basically the layer that you go past and you're in space Okay, and there's no air in space, there's no water vapor in space, there's nothing to slow you down. So if you go to space and somebody pushes you out of the space vehicle, well, there's nothing gonna be able to stop you until you run into something, like the gravity from another planet, an asteroid hits you. So there's no way to slow down in space. Um, the exosphere, we generally put it in with our atmosphere, but remember, it's not necessarily part of Earth. We're talking about this is going into space so this is plus 60 miles up in the atmosphere so i'm going to give you um some questions on a google doc and try to get them done if you get finished and you haven't finished the ones from the other week make sure you go and get those because i'm going to go ahead and start grading those i've actually started grading them um, it'd be nice if you guys could finish those up but tomorrow we'll start talking about hurricanes we've got some hurricanes brewing and uh we'll see where we go from there all right hope you guys have a good day